Welcome back to Fish Bones Fly Fishing. Um, today we're going to talk about knots. But we're going to talk about the importance of having a knot that is short, uh, doesn't use too much line, and you can tie quickly and easily, and is very strong, and allows the fly to ride free, sink fast, and look alive. That is where we come up with the non-slip loop knot. This is actually a non-slip loop knot, or might be known as a lefty craze non-slip loop. We talk about some of the things to watch out for in tying this. Um, like for example, this one here is inexpertly tied. Um, no offense to whoever tied it, but uh, it's much too large of a loop. So it has an opportunity because it's so large, they can actually get around the bead chain, pull the fly sideways, and then the bonefish won't bite it. Also, if you do that, and that leader actually touches any of the sharp portions of this bead chain. There's a little line you can see there where the bead chain is split. It could slice, chafe the leader and cut it. So this non-slip loop should be about that big. So it cannot get around the eye of the fly. So these are standard size bonefish flies. The eyes on these flies are too small for me to actually shove this fly line through it. But I'm gonna use the fly line because it's a lot easier to see how to tie the knot with this fly line. And it illustrates how the knot is supposed to look when it's done a whole lot better. So instead of these flies, which are typical bonefish flies, I think these are all number sixes, except for this one, which is a number four. I am going to use this hook here, which has a much larger eye, but is probably like a number two Possibly a 1-0, doesn't matter. The most important thing is it can pass through the eye of it so we can make our knot. So the first thing is um, you wanna give yourself a good uh, tag in. When I talk about a tag in, uh, what I mean is the part of the knot that you're gonna be um, manipulating the line with the most. The rest of the line that's attached, gonna be attached to your rest of your leader over here and eventually attached to the fly line. That is what we call the standing part of the line. So that's the nomenclature I'm gonna use. The little short piece, tag in. Long part, standing part of the line. First step to tying a non-slip loop is to make an overhand knot, like a granny knot, like that, simple. You wanna leave yourself a tag in. When you first start, about two inches long. After a while, you can do this with about an inch of like that much uh, extra leader. But um, at first you wanna need it a little bit more. After a while, one of the beaut beauties of this knot is you can tie this with literally only that much, make a good knot, and then you only gotta clip away three quarters of an inch of leader. So you're not shortening your leader very much every time you change your flight. First step, overhand knot. And every step of this knot, when I go back through that loop, which is gonna be very often, I am going to go back through that loop in the same direction that I went through. So I would be untying it if this hook was not there. So I'll run it through the hook eye, which would be standing in for your fly, run it back through the loop, and running it back through the loop again is um, running it back through in the way that it would be untying it. So if this hook was not there, I would be untying that knot. So it comes back through the same way. Now we're gonna pull on the tag end and cinch it down until you have the size of loop that you want. Now, typically, I wanna give myself a little bit more than an eighth inch space between the hook eye and that big part of the this loop here. Once I do that, I'm gonna pinch everything. And now I start making my wraps. And I'm gonna wrap around like this. So that's on the top, I start wrapping away from me. One, two, three, and I will go up to five times, but for the purposes of this demonstration, because this is a very thick line, I'm gonna only do three. But normally, on your standard bonefish leaders, between 12 and 16, 20 pound test, you're gonna go five times around. That makes the strongest knot. Every wrap less than five times is gonna reduce your knot strength by 10 to 20%. So instead of having a knot that tests close to 100, if you skimp on these wraps, you're gonna have knots that test 70 to 80%, 60%, whatever. It's not good. You want 100% knot strength when you're only dealing with 12 pound tippet. Now again, I'm gonna go back through the way I came out. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. Some people swear by going over the top of the knot. 
Some people swear by going through the opening here. I find it easier to go over the open, through the opening here and I've had really good luck with this being strong. I don't know how much it matters. You can do your own tests, um, but I'm gonna go back through here and then I am gonna pull only on the tag end, holding the standing part and pulling on the tag end. And that will cinch the knot down. And so what you'll end up with is a knot that looks like this. A few wraps around the standing part and a tag end that points back towards your flight. Then when it comes time to clip off the tag end, you always leave a little bit of a tag. I leave a tag that's almost the same size as the loop. If my loop is about an eighth inch, my tag's about an eighth inch. And that's because as this knot, as you fight a fish on this knot, it cinches down more and more and it pulls from the tag end in. If you don't have a long enough tag end, it'll pull it through the knot, the lot will unravel and you'll end up with a weird looking pigtail on the end. You'll think you broke the fish off, but what'll actually happen is the fish just pull the lot noose. And so now the knot just come undone, fish swims away with the hook in its mouth, which is not good. And you think, oh, I tied a poor knot. But in reality, the knot did not break. You just did not leave a long enough tag in. So you always gotta leave a tag in. If you leave a tag in, that's eighth inch. When you fight a fish on it, you'll find that tag is pulled on almost all the way in. And that's just because this knot is very difficult to cinch down all the way by hand without having a fish pull on it. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. So I always leave a tag in. And I'm not worried about tag ends on this knot because they face toward the fly, which means as I'm pulling this fly through the water, this thing here is not gonna catch on any weeds. This is the best knot that I know of for bonefish fly for the simple reason that it lets the fly ride loose, lets the fly, if I have a weight up here by the eye, the fly gonna sink like this and do that jerking up and down motion, that jigging motion, which bonefish love and other fish love, is the best way that I found to tie on a knot and it allows the fly to ride free. And that means you can use a heavier, you can get away with using a heavier tippet. We don't use anything less than 12 pound test line here for our tippets. And that's because we want to be able to fight these fish as aggressively as possible, not wear them out so that they become overly tired and are subject to predatory acts by barracuda or sharks or whatever. And it also means we lose less flies to fish and nobody wants that. Nobody wants to leave a fly in a fish's mouth. So strong loop knot gives you a chance to scale up your tippet. If you're used to using 10 pound, try 12. Um, if you're used to using 12, try 16. Um, I've caught bone fish all the time on, one, I've never used less than 12 for years and years, maybe 20 years now. And uh, I regularly use 16 and 20 and have no problem with bone fish biting a fly. They're not leader shy as people think they are. They just want the fly to act natural and the loop knot allows that to happen. So there you go, non-slip loop knot. Um, one of my favorite knots and the, probably the most important knot in your arsenal for flats fishing, for bonefish, tarpon, permit, snook, triggerfish, any of those flat species that you're targeting because it's easy to tie, it's very strong if, tie, if tied with five wraps um, and it is easily repeatable and does not use very much, even on this one, look how little tag in I would have to cut off. We're talking an inch and a half it would take me, you know, 12, you know, eight to 12 fly changes before I've significantly changed the action of my leader by using this knot and changing flies. Until next time, tight lines.